Hello everyone. Welcome to part 5 of the rise of nationalism in Europe. And the topic today is the revolutionaries. So today we'll talk about the changes what happened in Europe after 1815, after the Treaty of Vienna and from thereafter how the revolutionaries emerged. So uh, all the topics here are the reasons behind the liberal nationalist upsurge, upsurge, upheaval, rebellion, revolution, so all uh, quite similar. So in the years after 1815, the revolutionaries and specifically we'll talk about Gesaip Mezzani. So uh, the first thing here is the first topic, uh, the reasons behind the liberal nationalist upsurge in the years of after 1815. Like we have seen in the previous video lesson that in 1815 Vienna settlement happened, the geography of Europe changed and the changes done by Napoleon were undone. And everywhere conservative regimes were established, monarchy established. Like we have seen, Bourbon dynasty restored to power in France. Now, everywhere, conservatism established, kingship established, old order established. And again, the problems of the old order, the problems of uh, problems and issues of kingship, what always remain, that remained again. Again, after the establishment of conservative order, it was found that these conservative regimes which were set up in 1815 were autocratic. So this is something which is quite natural. A king or an autocratic person, a person who doesn't have any con external control and who rules in whichever way it wants, so under monarchy, under kingship, there, these things, uh, what we'll discuss right now, are quite common and that happened. So in the autocratic regimes, they were not ready to tolerate any sort of criticism. If anyone criticized the king, king would never tolerate that or the ruler would never tolerate that. So any dissatisfaction or dissent or criticism was not accepted under the autocratic regimes, under the conservative order. And these activities were, uh, these activities which questioned about the legitimacy of autocratic government, whether autocratic governments are legitimate according to law and correct. So these questioned, these, uh, these things were questioned uh, the people started questioning the legitimacy so these were not tolerated under autocratic regimes so very simply criticism and dissent was not acceptable under conservative order and most of them most of the conservative order imposed censorship censorship laws to control what was said in newspapers books plays and songs and reflected the ideas of liberty and freedom associated with the French Revolution. So the ideas in the French Revolution earlier and further. So all the ideas and the books and the plays and the newspapers were all controlled under censorship. So censorship when you don't have freedom of expression when you don't have the freedom to write and most important tool and the instrument or the weapon for the people was undoubtedly press printing press so those were censored under the autocratic regimes and the memory of the French Revolution nonetheless continued to inspire liberals so inspiration undoubtedly was there and the liberals got inspired by the French Revolution, by the memories of the French Revolution and they further 
became revolutionaries. Of course, I mean, this is something uh, which uh, I would say a cycle, dissatisfaction, revolution, things would be in order. Again, dissatisfaction, there would be revolution. So dissatisfaction among the people prevailed after 1815, because specifically because of censorship. One of the major issues taken up by the liberal nationalists who criticized the new conservative order was freedom of the press. They were not allowed to say, they were not allowed to express their feelings by, by writing or any other ways. Now you can look at the picture, so interesting here. And that shows the clear picture under the autocratic regimes. And this picture uh, you see here, and uh, the special thing here, like uh, everyone is wearing a mask, I mean, not to protect COVID, uh, the cover, the faces are tied and they were not allowed to speak. And uh, sarcastically, the terminology that is used here and it's a sarcasm here that the club of thinkers. The thinkers are sitting there and it's an anonymous caricature cartoon uh, dated circa 1820. I told you earlier that the C circa means approximate value. Okay. So this circa 1820, 20, this cartoon, this caricature was drawn and interestingly you see here that uh, the plaque on the left bears the inscription the most important question of today's meeting how long will thinking be allowed to us because the people the people here are thinking but they are not allowed to express the feeling the board on the right list the rules of the club which include the following silence is the first commandment of this learn, learned society to avoid the eventuality whereby a member of this club may succumb to the temptation of speaking or saying. So most importantly here, it's a sarcasm that has been expressed. Uh, it has shown that the club of thinkers are sitting here, but they are not allowed to speak and based on the commandments or the instructions given here as well as the picture. Now let's talk about the revolutionaries. So of course there had been dissatisfaction in the years following 1815. During the, during the years, of, years following 1815, the fear of repression drove many liberal nationalists underground. So liberal nationalists now became underground because there was not freedom of association. A party or association cannot be formed. So hence, uh, many liberal nationalists had to become underground otherwise they could have been captured detained put in prison and hence an era of secret societies emerged secret society the society or organization that are kept secretly not who work in a secret manner so another terminology here for secret society is a hidden society. So if we say secret society or hidden society, both are the same. So secret societies sprang up in many European states to train revolutionaries and spread their ideas. Got it? So to be revolutionary at this time meant a commitment to oppose monarchical forms that had been established after the Vienna Congress and to fight for liberty and freedom as for the ideology of liberalism. So the liberal nationalists formed secret societies and their ultimate goal was to oppose the monarchy, oppose the monarchical system and fight for liberty and freedom. Or, um, it's the same thing here. And most of these revolutionaries also saw the creation of nation states. Now this was the paradigm shift here, I would say. So the formation of nation states, the idea of nation state to form nation states, that became a necessary part of this struggle for freedom. 
Now let's uh, look at Josep Mazzini. So here's a person uh, here you can see Josep Mazzini and very important personality a great personality here. Josep Mazzini uh, you see here he was quite young when he was quite young the age of 24 here and uh, you see you get an idea here and that is taken from Wikipedia that I have taken so in office 5th February 1848 to 3 July 1849 right so serving with Orelo Safi not very important here so born on 22nd January 1807 in Genoa French Empire and uh, died in, on 10th March 1872 Pisa Italy so uh, most importantly uh, he was a very important player of Italian unification that you come to know in the part that would come next so now let's talk about Giuseppe Mezzani a very important character here he was an Italian revolutionary An Italian revolutionary, he was born in Genoa in 1807, became a member of secret society of the Carbonari. So initially he became a member of a secret society of Carbonari, however, he formed several secret societies. As a young, as a young man of 24, he was sent into exile. Exile when you are thrown out of the country. That is called exile in 1831 for attempting a revolution in Liguria. So he attempted a revolution in Liguria for the formation of nation state of Italy. However, that attempt failed and he had been sent to exile, thrown out of the country. And he subsequently founded two more underground societies, Young Italy in Marseilles and then Young Europe in Bern very important one mark question and it's very important uh, because often these questions are asked and I would say it's a boat question so young Italy and Marseilles and young Europe and Bern was established by Giuseppe Mazzini whose members were like-minded young men from Poland France Italy and the German states now very important thought here Mazzini believed that God had intended nations to be the natural units of mankind. So that was his statement. He said that it's God who intended nation states to be the natural unit of mankind. It should not be like the fragmented territories. The natural unit must be nation state. So Italy could not continue to be a patchwork of small states and kingdoms it had to be forged into a single unified republic within a wider alliance of nations so that was the vision of Giuseppe Mazzini to unite Italy to unify Italy and to form nation state and his ideas clearly express his feeling uh, this unification alone could be the basis of Italian liberty that what he felt that with the unification only freedom would be properly given to the Italian states and following his model as he created young Italy young Europe and his model of secret society dissatisfaction was everywhere across Europe so his model was adopted in Germany France Switzerland and Poland Mazzini's relentless opposition to monarchy and his vision of democratic republics frightened the conservatives. Conservatives were fearful of Mazzini because of his ideas and because of his act. And uh, a very important statement here, the last sentence you can see here, extremely important statement given by Duke Metternich and he once remarked that Mazzini is the most dangerous enemy of our social order and he talked about conservative order so yes clearly for the conservative order 
Gusev Mazuni was a threat, uh, was a great threat, and uh, that's what has been mentioned by Duke Metonic, clearly. Now, as we discussed about the emergence of liberal nationalism or uh, nationalist revolutionaries, talked about Gusev Mazuni. So now the assignments are based on the questions, um, based on the topics that we discussed today, all the easy assignments here. So one question for you I have, when you say Mizuni was born, I hope you learned the video lesson. Thanks for watching and have a wonderful day ahead. Thank you. Bye-bye.